Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome back to a new video. Today, I am bringing a tutorial to you that I think you guys will like. I'm going to be showing you how you can create this awesome C logo pretty easily inside of Adobe Illustrator. Now, the reason for this video is because a lot of people love these types of logos, but they don't know exactly how they do them and what the best method is in making them. So make sure you stick around by pressing that red subscribe button and a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, logodesign.net, and let's get ready right into the tutorial where I can show you how to really spice up your portfolio. All right, so the first thing you need to do inside of Adobe Illustrator is go ahead and choose a type or a font, and I'm gonna put the letter C. The letter C works really well for this, and I'm just gonna stick with it, but you can choose really any circular letter. Now you really wanna have a font that is quite thick and uniform, so I'm gonna choose one that I already like called Poppins, and it's Poppins Black. Now once you've got that, go ahead and right click, and we're gonna to go to Create Outlines. As you can see, the shape has changed quite a bit right there just from that. And the reason why is when you create outlines, it is no longer editable text. It actually takes that typeface and puts it back into its vector shape format. Now, the next thing we need to do is sort of segment this in a way that keeps the integrity of the C and make it look just like the C. Well, there's a few ways of doing this, but I think this way that I'm gonna show you is the best. So what you need to do is go ahead, highlight the C, and we're gonna press Shift and X, or you can just press this button down here. And this swaps the stroke to the fill and the fill to the stroke. As you can see there, I've got no fill right now at all. I've just got one stroke. The next thing I want to do is create basically a cut. Now these cuts are fun to make and they can actually be the bane of your life, but with a bit of practice, you can do it. I'm gonna use the pen tool or here I'm using the Inkscribe tool, which is basically a plugin from Astute Graphics. It helps me plot out my vector points easier. Now what you wanna do is put on Smart Guides by going to View, Smart Guides or press Command or Control U. This is basically a good way of making sure that we hit the spots that we need at first. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to here. There should be an anchor point right there. And I'm going to create a straight curve around here. And I want it to sort of fit. And I want the curve to end on the outside. So I've just plotted these two anchor points and pulled it a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and really go to town on how this should be. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. There we go. And I'm gonna make sure that the, this curve is exactly what I want. I could even bring it up slightly and you can really go to town on this curve. Now, if I wanna make sure this curve is really curvy, I can press Command Y, which will bring us into outline mode. Outline mode is a great way of seeing your paths perfectly so you see where they lie. And I like to do this when I've got like a, a specific kind of logo that I'm working on, such as a curvy one, so I can see where the curved line is. So I like that. So now the most important thing to remember about this is that when we create the line, it needs to come out of the shape and it needs to intersect these shapes. So it's very important for the next part of this tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and create another line. I'm gonna create one here, and I'm just really just eyeballing this really. Um, Cause I can just move these whenever I want, use a direct selection tool afterwards and just, you know, play around with it till I get the curve that I like. It can take a while to get the curve that you like, but the main rule of thumb is that it's supposed to sort of go into this circle here. Right, and then I'm gonna to go to outline mode. And I kinda of like that, that looks good. And you can see it's come out a little bit there. That's not too much of a bother. I want it to have like a really nice sort of shape. The next time we're gonna go ahead and do it one more time. And we're going to do it down here and it's going to sort of come to here. And we're going to just mess around with this again for a bit. And it might mean you have to change this one ever so slightly as well, which isn't a bad thing. We just need to mess around and make sure it's got that nice sort of curve that we've got going on there. But you can get really creative with this. Don't ever feel like you have to do what I'm doing right here. And for now, that will do very well. Now, what I'm gonna do is, even though we've got some weird shapes in there, I don't want them to all be uniform. I wanna have like some shapes that are bigger inside of there, but you can spend a lot more time on this if you really need to. Spending time on this can really make it that much better, but I'm just plotting lines that I know I can plot right now that would make it sort of make sense as a C logo. Okay, so the next part of this is we're gonna go ahead and duplicate it. With everything that I make, I always like to 
have like a contingency plan. So I like to duplicate every single piece of work. So I don't have to go ahead and search through my history of it. Now here comes the fun part. This is where we can actually intersect the certain shapes. Cause what we need to do is put shapes and gradients inside of each of these sections. But right now we've just got some lines in there. Well, what we're gonna do is gonna highlight all of this. And we're gonna go to our shape builder tool, which is over here or press shift and M. Now if I hover over this, you can see that it creates its own sort of shapes. And you can see that down here, we've got a bit of an issue because there's supposed to be two shapes, but it's acting as one shape. So what I need to do is zoom back in, take this and just move it in over this line or over this path here. And what that will do is if I go back to my shape builder tool, it will give me that extra shape. So what these lines are in essence doing is it's cutting the whole shape around. So, but we don't want these lines on the outside. So if we go ahead and press option or alt, you can see that the cursor goes from a plus to a minus at the bottom of it. But when you hold alt and you drag over these lines here that you've selected, it will get rid of them. Now, if we were to go ahead and go through this now, I'm gonna just click on the plus side of it we can see that this is all one shape. This is acting as their own little shapes and they're all paths that are closed. I'm gonna go ahead and take this, select it and shift X and that will switch it from a stroke to a fill. And we can see any problems. You can see there's a tiny little problem down here. So what I'm gonna do is select the artwork again. Oh, and there's a bit of the C right there. We're just gonna click on that with the option held down. Now all this is still one big shape that is made up of loads of different ones. So the next part of this is the gradient part. Now I've been so kind enough to put in the description a link to where you can get these gradients, but you'll have to put them in yourself. It's kind of a tedious process unless there is a way of doing it that's easier. But what you have to do is really just bring in the picture here and then use the eyedropper tool on the picture on the different colors of the gradient, go up to window, go down to gradient, and you can plot them in here. Now I've actually got them in my swatches panel, uh, which makes life a heck of a lot easier for me. So what we're gonna do next for the gradient is we're gonna select the first part of the C and I'm gonna choose it to be this gradient. Second part, I'm gonna choose it to be this. Third part, I'm gonna choose it to be this. And the fourth part, I'm gonna choose it to be this. Now this looks great, but it doesn't seem to flow very well. It seems very linear. So what we need to do is use the gradient tool, not the gradient window, but the gradient tool to create this as an angle. So we wanna make sure that the green is over here. So I'm just clicking and dragging on the gradient tool here. And then we do it the same here for the blue. So we get the dark blue down here. And I'm going from like basically the corners to the other corner. So we get the good, really bright part of the color in one corner and then the dark part in the other. We're gonna do the same for the purple here. So the dark at the top actually, and then the pink at the bottom. And then I'm gonna click here and do the same. So it goes to the corners. Now that looks like the pretty much finished look of the logo, but I think there is something else we can do to actually make this even better than you're seeing it here. And the way of doing this is adding highlights. Highlights always help when it comes to illustrations. So what you can do is create another gradient. I'm gonna create a gradient over here off the art bar because it's gonna be a white one. So what I'm going to do is, I have this gradient on right now, but I'm gonna to go to the black and white one down here. And then I'm gonna to go to my gradient window in the windows panel here. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this color, if I double click, to white. But whilst clicked on this gradient stub, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the opacity to zero. So what happens now is that we've got a gradient opacity. So it will actually fade out. And that's what we want. We want something that fades out. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put a green thing there and put my gradient over the top of it so we can see it. In fact, I'll make it black. I'm gonna just go ahead and lock that. Now, what we need to do is go ahead over the logo design and add some highlights. And this is super easy as well. It looks difficult to do, but it's super easy with the Shape Builder tool. All we need to do is create a shape on this part of the C here. So I'm gonna go ahead, select my gradient, and Illustrator will remember where I've selected. Go to my pen tool, and I'm just gonna pen tool it in. Make sure you've got Smart Guys turned on because what we wanna do is get to this point down here where the blue is met. I wanna just create a circle there. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can always play around with it after. 
But you can see here I'm just creating a nice circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish the shape by doing this. And you might think, well, that doesn't work because it's going on all the other parts of the logo. Well, do not fear. All we have to do is click this, click this, press Shift and M, and we can go ahead and do the same process with the Shape Builder tool, but just get rid of the outside of this like so. And now you've got the gradient or the highlight perfectly on that part of the shape, which is pretty cool. Now, the next thing you could do is go ahead and change the opacity of this, which you probably want to do. You don't want it to be too intense. You want it to be very subtle. And then you can also change the way that the gradient is. So you can change it from like a linear one, which I kind of liked actually, uh, to something different. And we can go ahead and do this again and again around here. So I'll do it really quickly to show you. I've got a gradient here. Just move this around. The pencil can be a bit annoying, but you'll get used to it. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the gradient again and I drop it from this one to this one. Change the direction and there you go. Now you've got your very own C logo. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanted to learn more about the C logo and how it's done, then logodesign.net, who is sponsoring this video, have a blog post which is linked down below where I give more tips about this. Now, if you're wondering what logodesign.net is, it's basically a massive resource for you guys. It's a website where you can learn more about logo designs, you can learn more about the industry, what people are doing, and it's really an invaluable place for you to go and see posts and content that will help you in your logo design journey. So to check out the blog post that features more about this tutorial and everything else, click that link down below and share it with your friends. Now, if you like this tutorial and you wanna see more, please press that red subscribe button. A lot of you guys don't press it, but it would mean the world to me and it'll also help you guys as well. If you did enjoy it, share it with your friends, like it, and if you didn't like it, press the dislike button twice and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you soon, goodbye.